Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Joseph Habrang from Orgnet, broadcasting from Copenhagen right now, uh, presenting you with yet another professional jQuery Ajax ASP.NET tutorial showing you a professional approach to make software and coming up with pro tips to make your skills that you already have uh, about certain languages or certain things that you you know already about programming and make them thousandfold better because you don't be, you don't become a professional programmer by learning how to write jQuery you lear, you're becoming a professional programmer by learning the habits and uh, the habits of a professional programmer the small things that you can't read in a book but then when you if you look at the code you're like oh my god this guy knows what he's talking about <clears throat> anyway so so uh, this is third tutorial and about the databases specifically how to create professional databases and I'm gonna talk about now naming naming conventions yes exactly naming conventions I hope that you have seen already my two previous tutorials and you have seen certain naming conventions there um, naming convention is something that people don't usually pay too much attention to because they don't think that it's really important and then if you start coding and you want to become a really hardcore coder having you know auto generated code using t4 templates or if you have use you take advantage of some crazy reflection or something like that then it's gonna bite you back badly you gotta have a clear beautiful naming convention so uh, mainly there are two schools and I of course uh, belong only to one of them because you can't belong to two schools at once and you, do, 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 you can't do two naming conventions at once it's only one is allowed obviously um, and there is specific thing that I, I do in the database first of all singular call all the databases singular because in your code when you use link or two entities or something like that you want your tables to reflect single object let's say user and and and, and an object user which will be one row of this table will be called user and you want to have this consistency you want to have the table even though it contains many users you want to be called a user because you want the table name be identical as the object name in your code and your object will be called user not users so you don't want to have an object called users when it's only one user you want to have it clear so even this table cons con consists of many users you always call all your tables singular always always and always this is the first thing that I always do. Second thing, when you have varchar fields like this, this is like not naming convention, it's just a habit, be generous. Put them a lot of text, you know, make 1,500. Don't be afraid of small fields because then at some point X or Y, you'll be surprised how that is going to bite you back and you'll suddenly have problem with two small fields and you have to make update script and then call your clients, you know, update all the servers and it's going to be just headaches. Be generous. I mean, don't go crazy with 1,000 characters for, you know, uh, gender or something like that. But be generous. And, uh, you know, I mean, make always twice more than you think is the maximum, or three times more than is the maximum needed, you know? Uh, it's just a, it's just a, it's, it's just a good, uh, good, um, good approach. Now, <clears throat> You see that I have a certain naming convention. This is one of the two schools that I that I that I've known. First of uh, the first of them that I don't like, but there is a logic behind them is that you put the table name before every single column name. For example, you would have here user ID, or you would have here user user email and the underscore is unnecessary. Uh, I I there is a reason why I use underscore. I'll explain it later as well. Um, what is the reason for that? First of all, it doesn't make sense too much if you just think about it because, well, I mean, you don't, if you make your objects and your object is called user, then you don't call the field user full name because it belongs to the user object. So obviously it's a part of the user. It's, it's a user thing. You don't want to, I mean, this field is user, so why would you put the prefix there? But there is a reason for that. I'm going to explain it why. There's a, the people who do that, they have, they have, they coming from MySQL, uh, um, MySQL uh, lang for MySQL background and there is good reason for that because when you're making joins uh, and there is an option MySQL which is not not there in MS SQL that if there is if you're joining two tables and they have a columns of the same name 
that it will automatically link join by these two columns I mean there's there is a normal join of course but there's this specific join that is there and which I think is really really nice really makes joining easier because obviously if this column is the same as this one then uh, we can assume that th this is the ID which will be used for joining which is nice but unfortunately we don't have this in MSSQL so making this following this uh, this procedure in MSSQL is basically pointless and now obviously if you would have for example here uh, user ID for because we would like to we would want to join those tables then if you want to have a nice naming convention you would end up adding the user prefix to every single uh, column in your in your database so there is a logic behind it but I don't like it because it just makes the properties and your column names longer unnecessarily because um, especially if you're using the link your joins are so easy I mean you don't you don't really join tables in the old SQL style so you don't need it and it un unfortunately makes properties longer on top of that when you're writing a code and you want to you hit dot and you have IntelliSense support, uh, giving you suggestions then I mean you can't type E and then come with the email immediately you have to go user underscore and then E and then it's gonna suggest your email so it's, it's, it's kind of actually pain in the ass for the for, for the IntelliSense so don't do it keep your keep your names just as they are ID email password full name and obviously like you can see ID repeats itself but it's okay however for the clarity if there is a foreign key I keep I do it still in the same way as before so I did put I put the prefix first of the table name that it's pointing to and then the column name that is pointing to and, and there is an underscore separating underscore is there for separation because sometimes I do crazy things with with the uh, reflection and then if I split this string by underscores then I see all the, uh, the, the the full reference and I can use it in some crazy ways but we'll get to this later um, but generally if the uh, my user my naming convention uh, is that the fields that belong to this table and are only for this table and inside they're just the names email password full name title URL key important keywords keywords blah, blah blah whatever else the referencing fields however they have the table name underscore column name there uh, so this is this is another another naming convention and you'll be surprised how useful it is next thing as you see I always have ID as ID nice uh, this is another naming convention I have third thing your type defining mappers and uh, no, your time defining tables which define some sort of type of certain row for example user type or article type or log type I always end with type uh, and uh, again the reason is because if you end up you're gonna end up using reflection in some crazy way so you wanna have it consistent don't make it log type and then user uh, behavior or article uh, you know usability or whatever just have type why not type makes sense always put type next thing is I put all my type co column all my typing uh, tables have the same columns ID and key and there is a, again specific reason for that because I autom I, I I have some code automatically generated using t4 for templates from all these tables and then basically it's just easier you have the same t you have the same columns why not make it more c consistent more more uh, more uh, unified don't call it log type key or log type name and here log priority name and then for user types for example don't call it user type name or something like that. why it's it just makes unnecessary complications just call it key why not or, or uh, and there's a specific reason for why I don't call it name but key and I'll come to that in a second uh, because there's even more to naming convention now let's go into inside this table log type or log priority I have talked about them already and I'll talk about them even more because what is inside is even more magical haha <laughs> there I come go inside the table wait for 20 seconds before my visual studio loads of course and what is here oh there is not just insert edit delete there is a specific naming convention aside for all the types type feel uh, type uh, tables every single entry I call it key notice 
I start with a prefix of the table name, so I know it relates. It, it is this table because in some strange situations, you will actually in some strange cases you will actually union this. You will make a union of this all type tables to have like like humongous size uh, table with all the types. And then if you don't have it, well, then you have a problem because then these are not unique. And if you have the prefix of of the type, well, then they'll always be unique because with each of the tables, t t tables we have a unique uh, prefix. Now, another thing, this is specific for the logger, of course. You can see there are three things that are common for all the tables because logger, of course, refers to many tables. It will be art for users, articles, or anything else. And notice there is a log type insert edit delete because this is global for all the tables. But then look what is before below. Ah, log type dot user dot account activated. Ah, smart. This tells me you. This is a table log type relating to user, and this action is actually account activated. Next one, the same deactivated, logged in, logged out, failed login. Next, log type dot article published. Ah, log type dot article dot translated. Ah, smart. Even more, log type dot database dot updated. Ah, this is actually the date when the database was updated. Makes perfect sense. Perfect structure. Nice naming convention. If I look to the log priority type, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna show you that I follow this actually very rigidly. And there you go. Log priority type dot essential dot high dot medium dot low always the same. Now, what is the reason? Why is just not a name? The reason for that is you will show this table, these tables later on in drop lists. And if you want to make any sort of smart website, your website will eventually end up being multi-language. And I'm going to talk about language handling in one of the tutorials down the road. But now shortly, you will have your database uh, using multi-languages and if you use the show this information in a drop list it's gonna be in one language because if you have name there it will be only oh sorry it will only be in one language now if you're gonna do uh, if you're gonna uh, want your website to, to be multilingual what I do this key is actually a key to a language the table. I'll have a humongous language table with all the all the text there in many languages, and basically this key here will be the key to my language table. So basically, when I show inform this this table in a drop list, I don't show actually the key as the event of as a text in the drop list. I actually join it with the language data table, and I show actually for the proper language. Now this is so important because you already think ahead. You don't think now. You think ahead. What is the next thing I'm gonna do? Next thing is language. Okay, bow. This should this this thing should be language based. And obviously, if you look at, the, at, the, at the, what is inside, of course you know what it means. It's it, when you just look at the table. Of of course, it's clear and understandable and understandable for programmer. What kind of information is there? It's clear. But this, this, will be your language key. And again, that's why you have a log type. I mean, you have the table name at the prefix because this will help you to this will help you to make your keys for the language unique. Obviously. So, now, uh, thanks for watching guys, and uh, I really appreciate that you, you watched this, and I, 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 you, you see how I, I uh, structure naming conventions, how I make name, naming conventions to make your database much more clear, to how to make your software awesome, and how to make you a much better programmer, so again, as I always say, now you, you know so much more about databases, so go and ask your boss for a raise because you deserve it totally. Take care, guys, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Have a great day. Bye.